You might have heard the term normalization toasted around, maybe in a blog post, a code review, or even during a system design interview. But what exactly does it mean to normalize your front-end state? And more importantly, why should you care? In this short video, I will walk you through a concrete example that starts with the nested state structure, the kind you get from most APIs, and show you the problem it can cause in the real-world React application. Then we will normalize that data step by step and see how it simplifies updates, avoids duplication, and make your API or UI more predictable. By the end of this video, you will walk away with a solid practical understanding of when and why normalization matters, how to implement it in your own code base, and how to apply this pattern to build better scalable UI architectures. Let's get started. You might have heard in the context of Redux, GraphQL, or even in interviews, but at its core, it's just a way to organize your data. Instead of keeping things deeply nested, you flatten them out. Each type of entity, like users, card, columns, get stored separately, and you link them by IDs. It's kind of like how a relational database works. And once you get the idea, it can really change the way you structure and think about state. So let's compare the nested versus normalized data structure. So let's say uh, you have a application, a board application. Uh, in the board, it has columns, um, like to do in progress down columns. And uh, in each column, it has cards. It might has multiple or none. And each card has a user or like a signee, uh, like people who is working on this item. You probably have seen this UI in Jira, Trello, or things like that. The data you request uh, from the backend normally uh, looks like this. So this is the board API response. It has board name, probably has a board ID as well. And uh, it has an array of columns. And in each column has its ID and name. And inside a column, it has cards list, which is another uh, array. And it has uh, the ID title for each card item. And uh, also I might have uh, a signee with a name uh, and ID itself. So this is a very typical response from a board API. So the UI to support such API will be something like this. Let's say we have a board uh, component that accepting ID. So you can, in the use effect, you can fetch that ID from the backend and then store the data into a local state. And then you can do something like, uh, if the board doesn't exist yet, we just load in. And it, when we have that data, so just ignore this one, I will get address that in, in a minute. Um, so this is the board and you will um, basically enter it through the columns first. And in a column component, uh, it will get all the cards in the column and uh, enter it uh, through the card in the column. And in the card component, you will simply, it's kind of a leave uh, component. You can then uh, render the card details. And uh, if it has a signee, you can run the name as well. Maybe it's wrapped inside a avatar. It will be a typical UI. Um, but yeah, basically uh, the component structure is a, is a component tree, uh, it's nested. Uh, board has column, column has cards, and the card has uh, assignees. And it's pretty much aligned or um, reflecting the data structure under the hood. So this is a typical nested structure. But a normalized data structure will be slightly different. It doesn't have any nesting. It's purely uh, flatted out. And in comparison, when in the normalized version of the data structure, everything else is flatted out. So for example, we have a board the board has column IDs. It doesn't have the column. It referenced the column uh, through IDs. And the column uh, has a similar structure. So it has a column ID and the name. But for the cards inside a column, instead of holding the card details in here, it's referenced that through IDs. And for card as well, we will have a card section uh, in the data. And inside it, it has 
card ID, title, and assignee ID. So assignee is a user entity, and we have user one uh, with username and user two with uh, user two's username. So as you can see, it's pretty much like a database table. So if you collect this one, uh, and you can see that more clearly. So you can think of the normalized uh, version of the data is like a database. Uh, each entity is a table. And the table can have reference uh, to other table uh, through IDs. So for example, a board can have column IDs and the column can have card IDs. Card can have uh, assignee IDs. And so then he, uh, is a user, basically. So this is one way to normalize the data of a nested version. Uh, in some cases, we might store all the column IDs inside the uh, columns table or like column section. It's more like uh, all IDs. Uh, we will store all the column IDs um, from this section. So in here, there will be column one, two, three. And basically, it's, it's just a build on top of the existing data structure to add a few metadata so you can uh, use the data more effectively. But it's not very essential. And sometimes we will have a separate section called by uh, IDs that will have all these uh, information stored inside. And with this structure, you can get the uh, data more like a semantic making sense. For example, you can get the column. Uh, from the uh, normalized bird dot columns dot bar IDs, and you give it a ID like column uh, one, and uh, the all IDs is a quickly way to check if the ID uh, exists in the columns section or not. But it's just a supporting attribute you can add to the data structure, but it's not necessary. I will just revert this to the simplest version here. So in short, in normalized structure, we split that data out. Users live in one place, card in live in another, and columns in another. And instead of duplicating information, each card just pointing to the user ID or assigning ID, it doesn't hold the whole data structure. So what is the problem? Why normalization matters? So let's say one of the user changed their name through the UI. You can type the username from somewhere to change it. If you are using nested stru a data structure, the data might appear in different places. And now you have to go find and update all of them. This is error prone and annoying. Well, with normalized data, you only update is in one place and everything else using that user ID get latest information automatically. It also makes things like filtering, merging backend update, and writing selectors are way easier, especially when you are working with Redux or a global state. Let's have a look at the example. In the board component here, let's see I have a hard-coded button here that has a, a handle click. When you click that button, it will call the change username. In the change username, it will update the board uh, data again. So to change the user U1 to Juntao Q, we will need to find the column first. And inside the column, we'll find the card. And in the card, we will find the assignee. And we will check if the assignee ID equals to the ID we are changing. And if it does, we will assign the name to the assignee. Otherwise, we just return the data. So you can see it's pretty um, deep. You need to like search through the columns the cards and you find the assignee and to do the change. And uh, the purpose or intent here is we are changing the assignee's name, but we have to deal with the co uh, columns first and the cards and then find the assignee. So on the UI, it doesn't have any significant difference here. So when you click the change name, it will change both. But under the hood, it will find all the things in the store or like in the board data. And we have to deal with all these uh, nested structure. Well, on the other hand, in a normalized version of the board, we have basically the same structure. But in the change name here, you can see that I'm changing the user section basically. And we'll find the ID because I know the ID because I changed that one. And I found that ID, I change the name directly. In such case, I don't have to deal with the column or cards anymore because that's entities that are out of my concern. My 
directly intent is to change the user from the old name to the new one. So I, I go to the uh, store and I find the user and change the name for that ID. So it's very direct. Um, and also, I guess the benefit is I change that user in one place and it applies automatically to everywhere. Uh, whichever card that using the user uh, through a UID, it will get uh, auto rerendered with that data. The only drawback or like uh, with such a naive implementation of the uh, normalization is I have to pass in all the information from the very top. So now I'm around the column. So passing the column, the cards in that column, because uh, in column only has the card ID, so I need to map them to cards, and this will be the cards uh, array or cards list. And also, I need to pass in the user section to the column. And in column, uh, I will need to change the interface a little bit, and uh, I will you know iterate through the cards. Card will have the assignees as well, and in the card, uh, we just run the title and the assignee. So it's a little bit too deep. Uh, or proper drilling uh, problem we are introducing here. And we can eliminate this problem by using the contacts API. Like we store everything inside the contacts and then use hooks in the individual components. Like in column, we can get column by ID. Or we might define a API in the contacts that says get column by ID and we can get a column uh, from that normalized Mm, store and run the, the column information. And in the uh, card, um, we all have a similar structure as well, like get a card by ID, get a user by ID, and then we do that in here. If we are using some global state management tools already, like Redux, that will be a little bit simpler. Uh, like in here, I'm using Redux uh, here as an example. So we have a store called uh, the board store. If we look at this store, it will be something like this. So in a store, we saved the normalized version of the data. So we have board uh, name, column ID, columns, cards, user sections. And in the reducer here, we change the username. It's pretty straightforward. We just get the ID of the user and change that name, pass it in from the action. So it will be only change the user section. And uh, in the uh, UI, that using the board uh, data structure, we simply do like in a no top level, we just get the, the board uh, information. And for each column, we don't have to drill in anything from here. We just go to the, uh, the column. And in here, we will use the selector to pick up the column by ID. And uh, then we will render the card IDs um, from here. And in each individual card, we will get the uh, card by ID uh, by unit selector. Uh, and then the assignee as well, get a user by ID, and then we render. So with such approach, we have to define a few selectors. Uh, you can think of this as uh, database queries, like a select something from the table. and um, then in each component, it has a query that queries the database, which is the store. And we pick up something from the store and uh, it has the uh, necessary data already and we run to that data. So you can think of this as a select column by ID, which is literally the SQL uh, statement. Um, and select a user by ID, select a card by ID, select column by ID, uh, things like that. And uh, in the individual uh, component, you can do whatever you like when you need that data from the store. With this approach, we don't have the proper drilling problem we introduced in the previous version. So to wrap up, normalization helps you keep your front end state clean, efficient, and easier to work with, especially as your application grows. It solves real problems like duplication, inconsistent data, and painful updates. And if you're using Redux, or any shared state, it fits in perfectly with selectors and normalized lookups. If this helps clarify normalization for you or give you an idea to refactor your own code, I'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment and let me know. And if you're into this kind of practical front-end architecture, making sure to subscribe.
I will be covering more front end system design essentials, one focused and used for episode at a time. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.